Today we are talking about how First Republic Bank almost shut down. The banking crisis was in full swing. Banks have been collapsing left and right. In March 2023 alone, four banks have either shut down or were on the verge of shutting down. First, it was Silvergate Bank shutting down. Then Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. Signature Bank followed. Then Credit Suisse almost collapsed before it was acquired by UBS thanks to a deal brokered by Swiss authorities. Now, the next bank to fail this year has been decided. All eyes are on the First Republic Bank. This is a small regional bank in the US. All banks used to envy First Republic Bank's business and high stock valuations. It had many wealthy clients. Its banking customers included Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, who took loans from the bank. Many of the ultra-rich took huge mortgages through the First Republic Bank. The bank had many high-quality loans to wealthy clients. This allowed it to make a ton of money through interest payments. When news of Silicon Valley Bank's collapse hit, First Republic was mentioned as one of the possible banks that might collapse as customer withdrawals were picking up. Many customers were taking their money out of the First Republic. First Republic Bank share price had dropped by 90% from a high of $144 per share to roughly $13 a share. No one at the time believed the First Republic Bank would survive their customers leaving the bank. Many people were scared they might not get their money out of the bank once it collapsed. So they began taking money out of many of the smaller regional banks like the First Republic and placing their money in larger, too big to fail established banks like the Bank of America, JP Morgan, or Wells Fargo. So far, customers have taken out over $70 billion from the First Republic Bank within the past few weeks, and that was 40% of all the customer deposits the First Republic had. While customers taking money out and placing them in other banks was a wise financial decision, First Republic suffered because it lost too many deposits. Money was flowing out of the bank rapidly. The regional bank focused on too many wealthy clients, meaning the deposits of those wealthy clients were worth more than $250,000. If First Republic Bank failed, their clients would not be insured by the FDIC, which is responsible for making sure if a bank fails, customers get their money back. If the bank collapses, 68% of First Republic Bank customers would lose their money. They wouldn't lose all of it, but they would lose anything above $250,000. The way banks like the First Republic makes money is that they take in customer deposits, then they lend it out to other people and collect interest payments based on the loan. Customers usually won't take all of their money out from the bank. It's unheard of. So the banks get to use their customers' money without consequences. The major problem with First Republic Bank is its unusually large 111% liability to deposit ratio. The high number means First Republic Bank lent out more money than it has in deposits from its customers. It was too greedy. It should not have lent out so much of its customers' money to other people. Because now that tons of customers were pulling out their money from the First Republic Bank, the bank doesn't have enough money to give customers their money back. The money the customers gave the bank were in the hands of other people, holding on to the loans from First Republic Bank. This forced the First Republic Bank to either borrow money or sell their assets to raise the money just to pay back their customers' money. Many of the larger banks are worried about First Republic Bank. They may all be competitors. However, this was a banking crisis they were in. The downfall of one competitor bank means they might be next. It would also show how weak the banking system is. Banks needs customers to understand their money is safe in the banks. It's a relationship built on trust. If the trust is gone, then the people losing faith in the banks will take their money out. None of the large banks want this. Many of them, including JP Morgan, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley, were contributing a total of $30 billion to the First Republic Bank to keep it from collapsing. They did this after consulting with US officials and regulators. No one wants to see a bank fail. Besides, the money the big banks gave to the First Republic was obtained recently. Big banks saw many new customers taking all of their money out from mid-sized banks and depositing them into accounts belonging to the big banks. Their accounts, basically. It was a flight to safety. So they are taking the money customers took out of the First Republic and then placing it back into the First Republic. The plan was each bank would deposit $1 billion into the First Republic as a sign of support. The big banks gave First Republic $30 billion temporarily to stop it from collapsing. It's okay for the big banks to play around with their customer money because, well, they're the big banks. It's highly unlikely their customers will take their money out. In the banking crisis, it's expected the exact opposite will happen. Instead of losing money, big banks should see a ton of new customers putting money into these big 
big banks. And we've already seen it happen when customers took their money out from small regional banks like the First Republic and placed all their money in the big banks like Bank of America. The First Republic Bank isn't just sitting around waiting for itself to collapse either. The bank has made a deal with JP Morgan Chase and the Federal Reserve to boost its available cash to over $70 billion through emergency loans. That's the same amount of money it lost when customers took money out of the First Republic a couple weeks ago. First Republic hasn't collapsed yet, but if it did, it wouldn't be surprising. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed your time here, please subscribe for more videos like this one.